Hello and welcome back to the BMW 12.0 challenge in iRacing. Now I wish that I could say I was looking forward to this race but I'm really not. The combination of the BMW M4 and Oran Park is an absolute nightmare. I've been dreading this one ever since the new schedule got released so imagine my horror when this screen popped up as I entered. Look at the strength of field that I'm up against. There are some real big hitters in there, and in particular, I'm looking at Elliot Veyron with an I rating of 6,921 and a safety rating of 4.99. So if I wasn't nervous enough before seeing that, I'm absolutely bricking it now as we start the formation lap. Now you'll see that I actually qualified 11th on the grid out of a field of 20, so given the strength of field that we're up against, I was really pleased with that, but any feelings of happiness over my qualifying quickly turn to dread as we get ever closer to the lights going green. The track is just so tight at every turn and it's one constant battle wrestling this M4 around and just trying to keep it in a straight line. So let's see how we go. I raced this combination a few times last season and I don't think on any of those occasions I got around these first two turns cleanly. So let's just try and keep it as tight as we can on the inside. Tyres are still cold. Grip's a problem. But we have made it around. I've got a car in front of me. He's going to have the inside line going into this right-hander. So I just need to give him space so that we both get around cleanly. He's still on the inside line, so I'm going to stay wide. And something might have happened up front. Yeah, there's a car spun out or two, three cars out. And we've clipped a couple of them as well. I think we've got through okay. We might just have got away. Oh no, we haven't got away with it. I can't turn. So it turns out my fears were justified. And that was my race over. Just like that, within half a lap. Uh, the car was undrivable, so I had to get a tow back to the pits, which cost me a good couple of minutes. And once again... The curse of the BMW M4 and Oran Park Raceway strikes me down. But studying the replay, I was actually really unlucky to pick up that kind of terminal damage because I just grazed that car there. But although the contact was minimal, that front left wheel was seriously damaged and I had no ability to turn when we came to the next corner. Let's look at it again from on board the car that spun originally. As you can see, it took a real shunt from behind which spun him right the way around, and then you can see me coming. And that was how minimal the contact was. But as I said, it was hefty enough to do some lasting damage. So a really disappointing start to the week's racing in the BMW 12.0 Challenge, but knowing how difficult the track is and how easy it is to make a mistake, it made sense to get back out on the circuit as soon as the car was fixed and just try and... Uh, capitalize on any other mistakes that are made. As you can see, we rejoined an 18th position. Unfortunately, the other two cars in the pits just got out in front of me, so I'm running last on track now. Two people have already quit. But yeah, we didn't have to wait long for uh, mistakes to be made. Uh, even though these cars are a lap ahead, there's one spun off on the left and another one crashing out on the right. Now that second car that you saw spinning out had the same wheel damage that I did and we'll see how it's caused here on the previous turn. There's the coming together and then as they try and get around there's a bit more contact and that's what caused some terminal wheel damage. As you can see no control whatsoever and that's what spins him out and he almost rolls it as well. So my plan for the rest of the race was just to drive around steadily not push it and make any more mistakes and hope that drivers ahead of me would spin, crash and ideally need a pit stop. And as you can see, by the time the race ended, we'd managed to get our way back up to 13th place. It wasn't quite high enough to increase my I rating, but it was certainly damage limitation. And after cheerfully being told that I'd get them next time, we're back to see if we can. And I've just finished qualifying and thankfully, thankfully we're in a lower split this time. So I'm uh, up against drivers who are a bit more of my own standard. And as you can see, we've qualified a lot further up the grid. Fifth out of a field of 14 cars. 
Uh, and actually that qualifying time is almost a second slower than I did in qualifying for my first race. So I clearly upped my game first time out, but 113.3, it's good enough for fifth. And I'm hoping that we're going to be far enough up the field to avoid any of those uh, shenanigans in turns one and two. Now you'll see that the formation lap's just getting underway. So without further ado, Let's return to the live action and see how we get on at Oran Park, take two. We've actually got ourselves into a really good position there when the lights went green because look at the gap behind, I can hardly see anyone in the rear view. That's going to make me feel a whole lot more comfortable coming into these first couple of turns because it's often cars out of control behind that can take you out. But we haven't got that to worry about this time. So as long as we get around safely, which we have done, we'll be okay. So the next up to worry about is these couple of turns, which is what put us out of the race last time. So I'm hopefully just going to leave a bit of a gap with these few cars in front so that if anything does happen I'll have a bit more time to react but no nothing has happened they're all through cleanly just being very cautious through here trying not to give it too much gas I don't want to lose the rear on these cold tires just want to keep it very very smooth Fukarek in front of us, I believe, started his six on the grid, so he's gained a position on us. So I think we're going to be down in six as we uh, cross the line. But I'm happy with that. Top six after lap one. And actually, we've got a really good drive on Fukarek here, so we might have the power to get past him. I'm just going to try and get a bit of a draft before I pull out. Don't know if we've got enough grunt to get alongside him before we run out of straight. So I am just going to ease off think better of that I really didn't want to be hitting that left hand kink at full pelt but we're going to get a position anyway look because there's a car in the gravel and we might even have gained two positions looking at the relative board I wonder if one of the top three was in the pits when we came down the start finish straight to end that first lap because it looks like we're in fourth place now so a really encouraging start let's just see if we can start building up some confidence in the tyres and up the pace just a little bit. Certainly don't want to push too hard too soon. Oh, which it looks like Fukarek has done because he's run wide. And he's opened the door for us to take another position. I think that's put us up to third. Wow, we got really close to Fukarek then as we nipped past him. But thankfully there was no contact. The last thing I want to do is pick up any more wheel damage. But yeah, that's worked out really well for us because look at the gap behind now. Fukarek's more than a second back. And he's got Alessandro for company. Yeah, and there's the confirmation. We are in third. Certainly wasn't expecting as good a start as this. And there's a long way to go yet, but just to be in a podium position even at this stage is really encouraging. Right, let's take a look at some highlights from those first couple of laps. And this first one is a perfect example of why it pays to be further up the grid when you're racing here. This was the mess that occurred a little bit behind me on lap one. Two cars there getting tangled up and spinning out big time on that narrow bridge. And it slowed down several cars behind. And there you see another victim of the damaged wheel. And then at the end of the first lap, this was me getting a really good drive out of the final turn. Just getting in Fukarex draft and then having a look up the inside. But the inside really isn't a place you want to be at this turn. So I did ease off. And actually while I was doing that, Alessandro ahead, just out of shot there, had already run wide. So let's wind back the action just a little bit. There's Alessandro in the yellow Turner BMW. Just getting those wheels onto the gravel and once you do that, there's no way of recovering it. He was actually really lucky he didn't clip the wall there because had he clipped the wall, that would have probably ended in a pit stop. And then a couple of corners later, yeah, Fukarek just missed the apex and had to break harder than he would have liked. And that's what gave me the chance to jump through.
Looks like Alessandro has fully recovered from that spin a couple of laps ago. He's now into fourth behind me, but he's still more than three seconds behind. I know that his qualifying time was quite a lot quicker than mine, so I suspect that that three second gap will be coming down reasonably quickly. But the longer I can hold on to this third position, the better. Starting to feel a bit more comfortable with the car now. There feels like there's a bit more grip. But I know how this track can punish you the second you start to become a bit complacent. I'm certainly not going to push too hard, even if I do know that Alessandro is closing down on me fast. That gap's down to two seconds now, so he's gained a second in the space of a lap. So I'm expecting that Alessandro will be incoming before too long. Or will he? He's just dropped right down the order, so I'm guessing he's made another mistake. And yeah, there's an apology from him up the top as well in the chat. So yeah, Alessandro has made another mistake. And that gives us a bit more breathing room again. We're back to having a three second advantage. Right, in all the excitement, it's uh, important to stay focused, stay calm. Just got to keep racing my own race and staying smooth, not make any mistakes. Now we've got Dominic behind us, but he's two and a half seconds back. Although it might have been Dominic's turn to make a mistake now because he's drifting right down the order and now it's Alessandro behind us again. Yeah, Dominic. Dominic's not even in the top six anymore, so mistakes are being made left, right and centre here. Hopefully none of them are going to be made by me. Right, let's take a look at the replay and see exactly what those two guys behind me were up to on that last lap. Starting with Alessandro in the yellow turn of BMW again, he just gets his rear tyre onto the grass there and that sends him way off course. And it's going to be a spectacular rejoin too. Somehow he keeps it out of the wall. And that's the second time Alessandro has come within centimetres of clouting a wall. And then Dominic just clips the inside kerb, which gets him a little out of shape. And likewise gets one rear tyre on the grass and that spins him off. Yeah, that gap's coming down quite dramatically now. Alessandro's within one and a half seconds of me. So I think I'll be relying on him making another mistake if I'm going to be holding on to this third place. Because he's definitely faster than me if he keeps it on the tarmac. But I can't be worrying about that now. I've just got to focus on my own race. Whatever will be, will be behind me if Alessandro is going to get close. I probably won't make too much of an effort to defend the position. For two reasons. One, I know Alessandro is a lot faster than me. And two, he's already been involved in a couple of incidents. So I don't want to particularly encourage him into making another one. And uh, getting me involved with it too. So he's right up behind now. Yeah, I'm expecting a move at any corner. If he gets any closer, I might just leave him a little gap on the inside to take if he wants it coming into this final turn. And there's a yellow flag to contend with as well. I don't know what's caused that. I can't see anything yet. But yeah, Alessandro is alongside me up the inside. It doesn't look like he's quite got the drive that we got out of that turn. But is he going to stick with it? If he is, I'm going to ease off just a little earlier. To give him the space he needs. Again, I don't want him losing control and taking me out with him. So yeah, while well, third place would have been nice, realistically, I'm not going to be able to defend for another four or five laps against a driver with the speed of Alessandro. 
So it was safest just to let him through. And we can still push for fourth place. So yeah, this is the replay on the approach to the final turn with Alessandro right behind me. And I just stayed out a little wider to give him the space he needed to tuck up alongside. There's the puff of smoke, which would have been from the spin in front, which I believe was the driver in second place. But yeah, Alessandro just about gets alongside me and I decide just to break a little bit earlier than I normally would and let Alessandro have that third position safely. But yeah, going back to the start of that lap when it was the driver in second position, Marcus Escheid, who got way out of shape coming out of the final turn. Just got on the gas a little bit too early and that rear came spinning around. But full marks for the recovery. He was back facing the right way in no time. That was impressive. I reckon we're probably going to have two more laps to go after this one. So there's still a little bit of work to be done yet. Gap to fifth position is uh, around about six seconds, so it's comfortable, but it could easily be undone if I run wide or make a mistake, so I've got to make absolutely sure that I don't. And we can still bring this home in fourth, which would be a great result on a circuit that I hate. Although, having said that, maybe I am being a little bit harsh on Oran Park. Because I have quite enjoyed this race, although that's probably because it's been incident free for me and I've stayed out of any mischief. So at least I've proved to myself that it can be done. You can have a safe race around here. I never thought I'd see it. Oh, and something's happened up ahead. What's going on? Oh, it's Alessandro. He spun again. Alessandro's made another mistake. And he's gifted us third place back with a lap to go. I know he's got good pace, but I think we might have enough on him now to get it done. He's gone completely. Yeah, there he is. Look, he's quit the game. Oh, Alessandro. What on earth happened? Well, we can see from the replay exactly what happened. And it's a very similar spin to Marcus, the second place driver a few laps ago. Just gets a bit greedy with the gas coming out of the final turn. And it sends the rear spinning right round. At that point, it looks like he's recovered. But then he gets on the gas too early again. And then decides he's had enough. Certainly don't want to take any chances on these last couple of corners. It does mean that the gap behind us halved. He's down to within three seconds of me now, but it doesn't matter because the checkered flag is out. And we are going to get an unlikely podium finish. Incredible stuff. Yeah, I really didn't see that third place coming. I mean, I know we qualified reasonably well and had a good starting position from fifth on the grid. But even then, I know how tricky this race is. And I would have just been happy, really, to get top six, top eight. So to get a third, uh, outstanding. Really happy with that. But just taking a look at some of the replays after the race shows how difficult it is to drive these M4s around here. Particularly this first turn. That first incident was simply a case of late braking. But so many more drivers paid the price of running out a little wide and touching that gravel. There was one. Here's another driver getting out really wide. And again, clout in the wall. And then we've got a different angle, but the same outcome. You just drift a bit wide, you're going to hit the tyre wall. Which is why Alessandro was so lucky when he didn't on that opening lap. Speaking of Alessandro, I did wonder if he might have been disqualified when he spun out with a lap to go rather than quit the game because he was involved in quite a few incidents. But looking at it there... He uh, only picked up nine incident points, so it must have been a rage quit. He was so frustrated. But more importantly, let's go up to third place. And I picked up a massive I rating boost 
for that podium finish, not to mention an incident free race and 66 points towards the championship standings. And speaking of the standings, I've just got to finish the video by showing you this screen. I'm on the front page of the Division 5 standings after two weeks. Now I know I'm not going to be staying there for very long, so I thought I'd display it while I could. And of course, we're only a few days into week two, so lots more drivers will be racking up points over the weekend and nudging me down the order. But for now, the view from up here is incredible. Take care, guys. See you soon. Cheers.